Hey guys, it's Prince Rich with Rich Technology Group. In today's video, the title is going to be called The Top 2 Best Cisco IP Phones of 2019 from TPX Communications. So today I have a special guest, Mark Pine, who is the Regional Business Development Manager over at TPX Communications. Um, Mark, before I introduce you to these guys uh, and give you the floor, let me explain to them why I wanted you on this video, specifically regarding Cisco phones and the two most sold phones that you guys offer. So That'd be great. for those of you guys who watch my videos, you know that we represent all of the voice over IP uh, phone system carriers in the United States. And over the last couple of months, I actually got a handful of calls from two or three customers that called up and said they either wanted Cisco phones with the new voice over IP phone system or they said that they had an existing phone system with a carrier that they weren't happy with and they wanted to basically switch service but take their existing Cisco phones to their new carrier. The problem that I ran into was every single carrier that I talked to, the ones that you guys hear about me talking about on our YouTube channel all the time, some of the ones that I favor and like, they don't support Cisco anymore. So uh, a lot of it is some, well, I'm going to let Mark explain some of this, but the short of it is, is that most of them won't support Cisco phones or equipment at all. Some of them still support some legacy stuff as a courtesy to their clients, but they have specifically told me a hard no on not introducing any new Cisco phones into their platform for support in the future. So I'm going to let Mark talk a little bit about what this is, what has kind of happened and where they fill the gap. And then we're going to talk about the top two Cisco phones of 2019 for TPX Communications. So, Mark, tell everybody kind of where you guys fall into play and what's happened in the market with Cisco. Uh, well, uh, that's a great uh, uh, introduction coming into this, Prince, and I truly appreciate the opportunity to share this with your fan base as well. Um, you know, here at TPX Communications, uh, we are uh, part of the Broadsoft partnership in world that's out there. Uh, we are one of the largest providers. Uh, that they have on their platform, and um, as some may or may not know, Cisco came in and made a big power play onto the Broadsoft platform. So they came out and purchased Broadsoft a little over a year ago. I see. And what this has done, it's it's actually scared away a lot of the other competition because a lot of them weren't in the Cisco environment. A lot of them were competing against Cisco, um, and then just being part of that platform and what have you that, that, that doesn't have that hardware to kind of uh, back up uh, that particular product line or what have you, they decided to either create their own platform or just totally move into a whole new direction. Because of our partnership through Broadsoft and as large as it was and is, we're embracing this partnership. We're gotcha. bringing on the partnership with Cisco uh, along with Broadsoft to provide a company with not only a enterprise solution based voice over IP platform, but the Cisco technology uh, to back it up and run it over. So gotcha. for those that are out there right now that uh, are in that whole Cisco environment that, uh, you know, we're a Cisco shop and this is where we're going to be. We're here to accommodate that. And gotcha. we've been seeing a tremendous amount of flow and, and grabbing a tremendous amount of market share uh, with being able to support those Cisco environments, uh, but also more importantly, um, you know, from an engineering standpoint, from a functionality standpoint, from uh, possibly even a um, uh, uh, a systems uh, uh, oper you know a systems operational uh, challenge standpoint, um, our engineers uh, that are state of the art engineers can walk through any type of customer. No, how, no matter how knowledgeable uh, they may or may not be with a specific system and help make sure that they're comfortable in their day-to-day -day business and work environment. Cool, cool, cool. So if I'm understanding you correctly, whereas many of the voice over IP providers have kind of abandoned supporting Cisco because of the whole fear of Cisco Broadsoft taking over and it hurting their business model, you guys, while you still support other phones like Polycom and, and Grandstream and potentially some others, you guys have kind of embraced it, not only because you like the Cisco technology, but also to be able to help uh, the way that I'm seeing it. Number one, people who are looking for new service that have existing Cisco equipment or 
people that want new service and like Cisco. They prefer Cisco systems for their voice over IP phones, correct? That's right. Yeah, okay. I mean, so many times, and I just went in uh, just recently to a real estate investment firm uh, where uh, the majority of their employees is close to a thousand. Well, well, let's save let's save the story for later. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. let's save right, the story right. for later because I've got yeah. some questions on that of some examples a little later that I want to hear. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. But yes, uh, to that point, and we're, we're unique here um, as a carrier, um, also a managed service provider. Where we're, we're unique in that Cisco environment is that, yes, you may have a traditional Cisco system out there right now. Maybe you had made that investment a couple of years ago, and it's not going end of life. Because it's expensive equipment for some. So yeah, to be able to have a yeah. provider like you guys that supports it, whereas everybody else is abandoning it, abandoning right. it is a good thing. Um, one thing I want to say for you guys, the viewers that are watching this, before we get into the review of these two phones and talk a little bit more about some stories and some examples and the types of customers that TPX specializes in helping that you know prefer Cisco, I want to make it very clear in this video that if you're watching this video and you're just looking to buy the phones, uh, like for example, you're stuck in contract or you're very happy with your carrier that you have and you're not looking to switch services, um, TPX and most voice over IP providers are not in the business of selling phones. So for those of you that are just interested in these two phones and would like to find the phones for your existing VoIP, there will be links below this video to Amazon or whatever where you can buy those freely. But the purpose of this video is to review the phones um, and then if you need new service, we recommend TPX as, a, as one of the last standing uh, uh, voice over IP companies out there that has some very strong support for Cisco. So anyways, let's jump right into the phones. So okay. the first phone, Mark, that I want to review is the Cisco, um, if you want to pull up your uh, thing so people can see it, it's going to be the yep. Cisco... IP phone 8851. Yeah. Um, uh, let's talk, tell us, tell, tell the viewers a little bit about the features, like, you know, about the chassis of the phone, how many lines, things like that. Just give us a quick overview of the phone in general. Sure. So, um, you know, as you can see here, it's a very sharp standard phone uh, for your, um, you know, your everyday employee that's coming in, checking into their, uh, checking into their office. Could you, their, could you pull uh, up the one sheet that you have that has the, uh, the model name and whatnot? Sure. And the, yeah, that right one. Here. <laughs> so the viewers can see what it is. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So they can follow so right along. Here, uh, definitely that, uh, what we have working from, from this standpoint. Um, so you're looking at pretty much a five inch resolution widescreen color display um, that's right on the very part, the big, uh, you know, part of the phone there on the front. Um, it does have five program, uh, programmable lines on each side, okay, for you to be able to have uh, key line features, speed dial features, what have you. Um, it also has expansion models for you know, typically in a receptionist environment yeah. um, where you just want to point, click and shoot to be able to transfer a call, blind transfer a call, uh, very easy access to do that. Uh, great phone to be sitting, um, you know, up in your receptionist area there for her to be or him to be working off of it and uh, working in that environment. It is a GD phone. So um, for those types of environments where you may not have uh, a single point of drop for your computer to access the internet yeah. and then another another ethernet port for your phone to do it. Uh, this can create a daisy chain environment where you can run your computer through your phone um, and, uh, and and kind of do away with the dual drops. If you Great will. for people that don't want to spend the money for structured wiring. I run into that a lot. People that exactly. they want to switch to VoIP, but they're coming from like an old traditional system. And of course, you know, they would definitely already have a wire in theory going to one computer because they need internet and whatnot. But that's a, that's a great feature for people that, you know, they want to switch to VoIP, but don't want to spend, you know, per se five to $15,000 or higher on just structured wiring to make the switch. Yeah. On, on, on possible things like that. So we're not taking any functionality away from your data environment for your streaming and what you need to do to perform that day-to-day -day work over your computer. Cool. Okay, so yeah, it's all, it's all gig enabled. Um, there's also a dedicated headset support. So, um, you know, in typical environments where people along with their Cisco hardware, you know, want a headset environment, which a lot of people are going towards there too. 
there's ports on the back of that to be able to have a, a, a Bluetooth or a wireless type connection feeding off of the hardware that's there. So, awesome. um, you know, you can have on that as well. Um, and then obviously, um, when you are purchased, when you are getting the service, the voice over IP service through us, and we can provide the phone either for a, a upfront cost, um, or even stretch it out for those that want to avoid that CapEx that, you know, that yeah. maybe potential large upfront cost, we can spread the payments over time. Um, we, we fully provision the phones as part of our installation process and ship them out to the end customer. And a lot of times I can get those types of charges waived for them. Awesome. Uh, getting the phone through this and do it and having us provisioning it in our own house. That's cool. Um, I will say one of the big differentiators again from us, from a lot of the other voice over IP providers, especially when you're not buying the phones from them that you're that you're kind of going on a monthly lease or rental or whatever uh, the end carrier may be calling it. Um, they don't. They don't say that you guys are actually on the phone. Own the phone. <laughs> I've seen this you know, before. They, you, they will own the phone. You. You know, I work. You know, I work with all of the carriers, and I've seen this before, where I ask some of the folks. I see the lease price, and I think, okay, well, you know, if it's not too big of an outfit, five dollars a month, three dollars a month for the phone, and then I always get asked the golden question: Well, when my term is up, do I own the phone? And some of the carriers, it's surprising when I go back to them, they're like, no, you don't ever own the phone. And I'm like, that's interesting. But you're saying with you guys, regardless of how you work out the numbers or cut them a break, maybe a little bit on the hardware or stretch it out so that the upfront cost is not so bad. When the term is up, they do own the phones. Absolutely. Okay. There's no more monthly payment, uh, rental or lease or what, cool. what have you with that. We call it an extended payment plan. Frankly. Yeah. Um, and then after that term is over, no more charge for that. And it's just the, the voice over IP side. And we're still supporting it. We're still backing our guarantee that if something does happen to that phone, we'll replace it. Um, and then, of course, there's always that environment where they may want to upgrade in, over a particular part of time or what have you. But these are the most modern Cisco phones that are out there. And I would say the average average support life of a phone or Phones going end of support or end of life, it's about seven to eight to nine years, yeah. right around there. I was going to say so, five uh, to seven, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, no, uh, I had one other really quick question, and this isn't to play devil's advocate. The only reason I ask this is because uh, I get asked this so much by people with all the different carriers is if I, you know, if I sign up with XYZ carrier, this isn't so much talking about you guys, TPX, it's the phone in general. This phone, if they were to say sign up with you guys with this phone and then they, you know, four or five years down the road decided to go with another carrier or if somebody, you know, would they, is this phone compatible? Is it compatible with most of the other voice over IP systems that support Cisco? Yes. Okay. Yes. If, if you have another system and another carrier that will be able to support Cisco hardware. On <laughs> Which is the catch. <laughs> And, yeah. and, and again, this is what sets us apart from a lot of the other providers that are out there right now. In an environment As most aren't supporting it. Don't want to, you know, maybe get rid of their, their, their existing system right now. We can support those types of systems on our platform, whether it be in a SIP based environment where we can create a voice over IP environment to kind of ease into, you know, that this, you know, the ever changing evolution here going over voice over IP. Um, if you're not there yet, or maybe yeah. you want to test the waters, it's, it's a great, great way to be able to do it through our SIP service for the, um, you know, via traditional systems that you have here, or just blatantly just take on a full-fledged voice over IP application uh, with a with with an existing Cisco phone that they have, or of course these newer versions here that we can offer to up, upgrade and, and update Got the current it. system environment. Got it. Um, yeah. What is the retail cost of this phone? I mean, I know we talked about, obviously, ideally, the best way to get it and get the best deal on the phone is to get it with a new service provider, i.e. TPX Communications. Just so the viewers watching this know what this phone runs, what does this phone on the market typically run, like if it was purchased outright? Yeah, purchased outright, uh, basically, again, you're going to be out there looking at different models. Some may be refurbished. Yeah, you know, new in working condition with all the manuals. <laughs> Somewhere right around three hundred dollars, maybe just shy of three hundred dollars okay. out there at the marketplace. Right okay. Now. 
I'm glad you specified that because some people may look at it online and see the phone for $45, <laughs> but that, that doesn't necessarily mean, typically when I see that, it means it's may have cosmetic damage refurbished. And the biggest one I see is it doesn't have all the accessories. I've even seen them with like no handsets or something right. like that. If you read the fine print, but um, anyways, uh, could you give me one or two examples of some businesses that you've worked with? that preferred this phone when they came to you guys for service and they looked at your portfolio of the phones because we already know you guys offer all of the cisco equipment on the market but you also offer other things like polycom and whatnot give me some examples of one or two customers that when they looked through your portfolio they looked at the 8851 and they said that's the phone like why did they pick the phone and what success did they have with the phone in general yes yeah it's a great question and kind of leading into where I was kind of maybe jumping the gun a little bit earlier. <laughs> no worries. Uh, uh, you know, a, a real estate property management firm, uh, you know, that has anywhere between 700 to 1,000 customers. This just recently happened over wow, that's the a big last one. 30 days. Man. They're in a Cisco environment right now uh, from, their, from their hardware on their desktop, the phones themselves, all the way back through their switching and everything. And, and you said they have how many extensions? Like, you said they had about how many extensions? This, this is a fairly larger enterprise type environment. I mean, we're talking, you know, about 850, 900 extensions. Gotcha. So yeah, that's a big one. In, yeah, that are already currently in a Cisco environment right now, and they didn't want to totally disrupt the Apple Card, if you will. Right? They didn't want they didn't want to have to go to a whole other manufacturer. Yeah. Because a lot of times, this is a very sensitive time for a lot of employees. Um, whether it be, you know, the millennials that are out there that are coming in that are looking for the most latest and greatest technology of what's happening, Cisco has it. For those folks that have been, you know, that are set in their ways, that have been around for a lot, that may be intimidated yeah. uh, by a new system or change coming into something like this, um, just seeing a whole new brand and a whole new, um, you know, type of company coming in to do it, that alone, um, you know, sets a lot of... It's very disruptive. So, yeah, very That's a big learning curve, you know. If it's if it's ten people, it may not be a big deal. But no. now that you mention that, it, it we provide training. We will provide training in all this. We we do have webinars and and we have a uh, certified corporate trainer uh, that will you know go over the ins and outs of all you know announces of all these phones and make sure that people are comfortable with it. We yeah. also have on site training. Uh, you know, for a charge where an individual can come out there and do it. But again, in this particular scenario, you know, whether it be, you know, 20 folks, you know, 20 to 50 folks in, a, in, a, in an office in, yeah. you know, environment or, you know, 200, 500 or 1,000 people in an environment, they don't want to, you know, they don't want to mix things up too much. So the familiarity with yeah. the Cisco coming in on top of that was a relief to say that, you know, a lot of companies that we went down the line to see if they offered supported existing hardware, Cisco hardware, or would be able to replace it with the latest and greatest, it, it was tough for them to be able to check the box to say that you could, uh, you know, that they could do it. So, um, you know, again, uh, it's just what we see going on in the marketplace right now and uh, something that I'm a, alleviates a lot of the stress up front. I'm a big fanatic of, uh, back to what you said about the learning curve and everything. Like I said, for 10 people, it's not a big deal, but for an account that large with 800 and something to a thousand people, that's that's a lot of lost time. But I've always been a big uh, fanatic of it, especially in the telecom and internet world. Uh, go with what you know. So if the people already know the hardware, why switch them to Grandstream and Polycom? And uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's move on to the second phone. The second phone that I wanted you to talk about is the Cisco IP phone 8845. And from what I understand, it's not too terribly different from the 8851 we just covered, except this one is a web conference phone that is more geared towards not only your basic phone calling and voicemail and functions like transfer and do not disturb and caller ID, but it's more centric to people that rely on video conferencing, such as you and I right now. <laughs> so um, anyways... Um, tell us a little bit about the features and function of this phone. Yeah, again, um, you know, you're looking at a, a scenario here with storage that comes in here. There's a lot more storage in the back end uh, to be able to support 
uh, different functionalities like the added uh, strain that video may put yeah. in a particular environment. Video is a big thing these days. So that's right. Yeah. So so even when you're not in video mode, if you want to get customizable with with the different features that are on it through the uh, the video, whether it be streaming pictures. Uh, different things that you want to see popping up, whether it be news, different things, you know, streaming, so on and so forth, uh, then this has a, a lot more storage, a lot more room to be able to support those types of applications that are there. Gotcha. Again, the key differentiator here is, of course, coming with a camera that sits on top uh, with a uh, decent sized screen and then, you know, right around the same screen there that's color display. Um, and able to work in a video environment for that one-on-one -on -one type stuff. And let's face it, um, you know, more and more companies now uh, are turning to remote type scenarios in, yeah. in a working environment. Uh, people are, you know, working from a global capacity uh, now, and this just brings everybody closer together to have that, that enhanced video that's there. And quite frankly, also sets up a culture in a, in a in an organization that you may have a lot of people working from a remote office to kind of, you know, get into that office mindset. Feel like it's kind of like you and I right now, like even though we're miles apart, it's we're still productive and collaborating. So I see what you mean. It's kind of like the team building thing without actually being within, you know, arm's reach. Um, tell, tell us a little bit about the basic features of the phone beyond the camera, like how many lines, um, yeah, some of the function and things like that, the screen size and whatnot. What's some of the basic functionality of it? Yeah, the, the five programmable keys, which will give you uh, the ability on each side to to have speed dial capability, um, you know, different features right there that, uh, at the tip of your fingertips that, that, that you're looking at there to kind of navigate through. Yeah. It's a very easy phone to navigate through and be able to configure and customize on your end, just like the, uh, the 8851 was. And, um, and, and, and in essence, um, you know, again, it's just the, the HD video, uh, the video uh, capability on it. And with the, you know, Cisco back name with the reliability and the hardware that they have. I mean, it's, it's just, uh, it's, it's one of the prime uh, video conferencing phones that you can find out there in the marketplace. It literally looks like, so to, so to, to shorten it up, from what I read up on this phone, even before our meeting, it seems like this, this, the 8845 is almost like the previous 8851, just with more storage and a webcam on top. And I'm assuming probably a better processor inside of it because it's got a, you know, it's got a handle normal call function and, um, and video. I see too, it's got the, it's got the gigabit. Yeah. It's got the gigabit ports and all that as well. Um, yeah. So to get a little bit, if you wanted to see a little bit more of a uh, an updated, uh, you know, closer to what it looks like up front would be right here. Uh, okay. Particular here. So, um, you know, again, the, the desktop view, it's a very sharp phone, um, you know, like the 8851 for those that, you know, want to kind of set a persona, if you will, yeah. about the type of business that you are. Uh, somebody comes into your office, a client or what have you. You have this sitting on your desk. Um, you know, it, it kind of displays that sense of of uh, of biz, you know of business ship, if you will. Like, what um, um what is this phone retail price for those who are watching that don't need service? Uh, back to the they're either locked in or they're happy with what they have. What is this phone typically run on the market if they were to you know to 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 buy outright? To, to purchase, yeah, to purchase it in the uh, uh, upfront um, versus you know that extended payment policy. You're looking at uh, a phone that's uh, just north of three hundred dollars. That's right? not bad. It's not bad for a seven twenty p HD webcam phone. You know. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. And then from an extended payment, pro you know, program. I mean, we can get it down to seven, you know, seven dollars a month. You know, seven dollars a month. Uh, you know, anywhere between seven, you know, seven fifty a month on an extended. And they own them when they pay them off, so that's always and good. They will, They're not on a yeah. lease for to, for eternity. Yeah. There, Could, so um, you know, it's just a matter of that. Um, of course, if anything does go wrong with it, um, you know, we're here to stand by the warranty and replace it, uh, you know, at no additional cost and kind of work from there. So, Could you give me um, one or two examples of some companies that you've worked with or that TPX has worked with that 
uh, again, when they looked at your portfolio and they looked through the Cisco stuff, the Polycom stuff, the Grandstream stuff, or the Yalink or whatever other brands you offer, they saw the webcam phones, they saw these, the uh, Cisco 8845, and they were like, that's the one. Um, I'm more so interested to find out what type of company were they, because as you know, I'm a big YouTuber. For the people watching, they know I am, but I even personally don't really feel the need to video conference with the people that I talk to on the phone. It's not really a need for me. So now I'm curious to know what type of companies are that you guys work with that when they saw it, it was the one. <laughs> well, two, two really key uh, uh, verticals that, that do take advantage of this type of technology now. Uh, one being legal, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, now, uh, whether it be law firms that are, you know, uh, going down and taking depositions from customers. You know, I see. Base, um, or, you and know, they can record that. You guys offer call recording, right? You, you guys offer call recording. So that means in theory, an attorney, like you said, if he's taking a deposition or a statement, they could use you guys call recording feature with that phone to actually record not only the, the, the person. So then the person, you know, they, that's also their alibi. <laughs> that's their, that's their alibi. And they've got the statement and they know where that person was. So yeah, especially for the larger type legal firms that have a partner base that spreads, you know, throughout the country, but there's certain divisions of certain areas that specify, um, or excel in, in certain areas of law or not, and that, that they could refer certain cases through. Yeah. It's also a great way for, for you to get to know and, and see your, your, your end client a lot better. Uh, some others, too, in the medical field, we're finding more and more uh, physical therapists. Wow. Uh, and, and certain things rather than that office visit for – uh, their clients and their end customers to come in. It's kind of like almost like those video workout uh, modes that you have going on yeah. right now yeah. where the physical therapists can actually work with their end clients in their in their own home environment, right? Uh, just as long as the, their end customer uh, or their end client has a um, or, or patient, if you will, in this particular example, yeah. uh, has their video conferencing capability on their end, which we can provide over our platform that we're talking over right now, uh, that this is a good phone to be able to operate off an environment like that. Yeah. They don't want to do a full screen or anything right there that's, uh, that's uh, you know, customizable to them. Got it. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's uh, two big fields right now that we're seeing move into that. I'll tell you another one, you know, engineering. Uh, a lot of engineering firms, architect firms, uh, bringing people together through the video conferencing, through the document share, um, you know, whether it be, you know, drawings and certain things like that. Yeah. Especially when they're, you know, traveling, or whether it be around the world uh, for different projects or just here domestically. Um, a, a lot of need right now for that video type collaboration. That's out gotcha. There. And, you know, again, when you're dealing with TPX, and you're dealing with Cisco and the platform, the Broadsoft platform that we're bringing our enterprise voice over IP services over. Yeah. Uh, here at TPX, all our support, all our engineering is U.S. based. Uh, U.S. based. So when you're when you're talking to somebody that's here um, within your time zone and what have you, they're they're right here in the U.S. That's so, important because uh, I have a lot of customers that. I have a lot of customers that uh, will just kind of tell me, they'll be like, I don't feel like calling support or I've had some customers with other carriers, which I won't mention that have literally called me and said, Prince, are you busy? Can you do this for me? Um, and usually I'll always do it. I'll always call a provider for a customer as a courtesy, but I've had many that would literally call me and say, I couldn't understand a thing that person was saying. I don't want to sound rude, but could you just handle this for me? So, so that's good to know. Yeah, and, and, and um, you know, in our care department, when you're calling into a care line with either a functionality question um, or say, some type of challenge that you may be going through uh, on your end, a certified technician is the first point of contact that's picking up the phone. So here at TPX, we take our one call resolution very seriously, and about 90 to 95 percent of the calls that we do take um, are, are pretty much handled and corrected uh, uh, with with efficiency and and uh, you know very appreciative on the on the customers end uh, when they're calling in for that support because of that model that it is it's not cheap to do but the culture here the way that they invest in the people 
and know that that customer experience now more than ever uh, needs to be ahead of the curve uh, and a top-notch experience for the end customer. We've invested in that to ensure that that's happening. Gotcha. Um, there was one more thing that I wanted to cover uh, before we conclude this video. When I researched these two phones, I saw that there was an expansion module that can be hooked on to either or. Um, let's talk about that a little bit. And can you tell the audience, first of all, what that expansion module does in the short sense? Um, for those who don't know, I mean, those who've you know, been in business for a while, they'll know what it is. But could you tell us a little bit about what it does, what capability it offers that enhances the two phones we discussed? And just give me one or two examples of the types of businesses that may benefit from the expansion module. Sure, sure. So uh, these are the expansion models you typically find in a receptionist environment. Yeah. Okay. So when you have a receptionist that is supporting many employees throughout, uh, this kind of gives the extension of the, the, the point to transfer, single point of uh, transfer. Um, and be able to release the button that's there and, prop and give you more options to store numbers than what you can on the physical hardware you know, part of the phone. Um, the other thing is, too, human resources, HR department, uh, maybe others that need that speed dial, that, you know, that, extended, gotcha. um, that extended coverage that you may not find on the actual phone itself on the desktop. Uh, this module is an excellent add-on piece uh, to give them more room to store, um, you know, to store their numbers. Uh, is that a dig? Uh, I just realized, is that a digital screen that's on there? At first, <laughs> yeah. at first, I kept thinking it was one of those old school things that has the plastic pull off with the paper behind it. But if I'm understanding that correctly, that's a digital screen, and that would give somebody the ability to see, to 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 see visible line usage. Like for example. I did an account many years ago who still is an active account for a law firm and the woman had a polycom in this scenario and later on she contacted me and said can we get an expansion card and the reason she wanted it was because there were about 27 attorneys in the office and they never wanted to be bothered if they were on a call so with the expansion card she was able to see through light codes uh, like whether it was solid red or amber or blinking she was able to see through light codes if the attorney was on the phone or not and if she could disrupt them to ask a question or see if they wanted to take a call. But if I'm understanding this one that you guys have for the Cisco phones, you don't need to do it by necessarily light codes alone. It looks like you can actually see the line and see the status. That's right. Yep. Through, through here as well, digitally, uh, dig digitally transformed and be able to scroll through your um, be able to scroll through your uh, click to dial type capability that's here. Yeah. Uh, your your uh, your quick dial capability, but also in the platform that we're providing, um, when they're getting our service, as we see here on the on the um, on the screen here, uh, you're in an environment where you see everybody's uh, presence and and uh, okay. ability through in the enterprise. So every uh, user can see it through the through your service as well. Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, and it's Please. all pre-configured on our end to build your your employee database uh, that we have. We'll, we'll take all of that on with our dedicated project managers working closely uh, with your IT team, your your office managers, or whomever is controlling that environment. And we're here to work side by side as a trusted advisor and partner uh, to ensure that we have all the data to get all of that work done. That's so time consuming on somebody's end. We want to take all of that away from the customer cool. and, um, you know, put that on us to help support it, build it right, uh, to deliver a nice clean package when it all, when it's all said and done. So, all right, Mark, well, I think we're going to wrap this one up. So for those of you who are watching, this is Mark Pine with TPX communications. And again, this is the review of two phones. As you can see, we went a little bit more past the review purposefully because this video is for those of you who are watching that you're either interested in voiceover IP for your business and you specifically want Cisco or you have a voiceover IP carrier that you may be at end of contract or may be unhappy with and you're looking to move to a platform that can support your existing phones and also, you know, offer new phones as your ones that you have go out of date or out of support. Um, 
Again, the reason that we found TPX and why we've invited them to start doing videos with us on and off is because none of the other carriers that we talked to uh, really supported Cisco phones and pretty much all of them have say, stated a hard no to future support on new phones and whatnot. So again, those of you watching that are Cisco shop or interested in Cisco uh, uh, with voice over IP service, um, thank you for watching. If you're interested in talking with Mark over at TPX Communications and getting some numbers and seeing if they meet your needs and budget, um, get with me. Again, this is Prince Rich, your go-to guy for the best deals on phone and internet service in the United States. I'll chat with you guys again. Thank you, Prince. Truly appreciate it. No, you too, Mark. We'll talk soon.